Hey everyone, you're listening to the Active Turnkey Podcast, a podcast designed for hands-off passive real estate rental investors. In the Active Turnkey Podcast, you'll hear Tom Olson and Jared Stoltmeister discuss all things turnkey rentals with other turnkey providers, service providers, and rental investors. Our goal is to help you reach your financial freedom and whatever comes after that. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Active Turnkey Podcast. I am your host, Jared Stillmeister, and we have with us the Tom Olson. Welcome back, Jared. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Tom. Thank you for coming back mm-hmm. to work this mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, last year was the great resignation, and mm-hmm. I think this will be the great layoff year. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I, yeah, it actually, seems like there's yeah. been like <laughs> two or 300,000 people laid off in yeah. the last week or so. Yeah. And that's so it seems like this economy's not getting better. We're being told that it is. What do you have to say, Jared? I, I'm, back being, I'm being told it is by people <laughs> on Twitter. They tell me that things are getting better. Things are getting that's better. What, that's what I'm reading. And things I are believe getting better. everything I read on Twitter and Facebook and all, all I have to media. say is build back better. Please, <laughs> somebody, somebody build yeah. back better. Wow. It seems like it might be the, the slogan might need to be build back broke. You know, what do you think? No, I, I think, I think not to right. be political or anything. Oh, no, 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 on no. This show. not on this show. <laughs> no, uh, no, I, th- I think we could, we could talk about this in another podcast. Uh, but, Maybe, but uh, the are you um, saying we're getting off track? No, we, I, we I don't just do that. Saying it seems like uh, uh, this is a great opportunity. Yes, is where I'm going, Tom. I agree. It's a great opportunity, and uh, a lot of times people are freaking out when I get it, you know, and and holding tight to cash. There's nothing wrong with that, and and uh, but the, one of the things we know about 2008 and everything that happened from that is that some people invested heavily, mm-hmm. and some people didn't, and and over and over again, a lot of people said, you know, if man, I wish I had, mm-hmm. you know, if I yeah, would have done this, 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 if I would, and we've even said, hey, if we would have bought a bunch of houses that we in Maryville in 2014, 15, 16, and just sat on them, mm-hmm. and this is why I have really started taking this this stance of like, I don't really know if I want to be a short time investor where like, mm-hmm. I really only own something for like, mm-hmm. you know, a super short period of time, like a wholesaler, for instance. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure I really want to take the super long stance that I'm going to hold on this property for 30, 40 years. Mm-hmm. I really think if you, you there, and I think it's been, it's been criticized like harshly to be what they call a market timer because they think they mm. everybody says you can't time the market like everybody always says that um but the problem is is like it's really not true mm. um you know if you in 2008 2009 we knew that property values had 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 mm. went down right mm. sure um <laughs> and in 2019 2020 2021 we knew they were they were high they mm-hmm. were higher right mm-hmm. like so it's interesting to me that people say that you can't time the market. Now, can you time the actual top? No. Right. Can you That's time the actual bottom? Maybe right, no. Right. But if you looked at the tops and the bottoms, mm-hmm. it's like you have mountains and valleys. Yeah. If you're buying anywhere in that valley mm-hmm. and selling anywhere on that mountain, like you're going to do pretty well. So yeah. I really love the three, five, seven type of year time frames and, mm-hmm. and things. And I, I do feel like it's, it's the place where I want to be myself um, and I want to bring my investors along the ride with that as well. We've done super well over that last mountaintop that we had and I, and we're not in that mountaintop anymore. Right. I'm no longer recommending that my investors sell properties. Um, I'm recommending that you look and I'll tell you that the, the, the tranches are less. You actually have less time on those low times than you have on the high times. Interesting. Um, you know, I was, I was uh, listening to one of my friends, um, uh, REI mom, and she was talking about normally, typically, the tranche, the bottom of the market is really only 11 to 18 months. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't have a super long period of time mm-hmm. um, to, to make those buys before things really bump really quickly, and then you kind of stay in those middle grounds. Um, and I believe that in some markets, we're going to hit that pretty quick, or we're already in some of those markets. And some people are buying. Maybe we're not there in the actual market, overall market, but mm-hmm. like in some of our areas, we're mm-hmm. being able, we're able to buy like mm-hmm. we're in those markets right now. So um, to me, it, it, it's interesting. But today's today's um, mm-hmm. podcast is not about the economy, and maybe we should have um, one of those podcasts coming up. Um, I actually do some calls 
um, and kind of like what's going on in real estate calls that, that we've been doing. I'd love to have you guys on. Those are free calls. They're live calls. Um, and we do those once a month. And uh, the last call was with Ann Kelly, and that's going you know, to talk about that. I think we might even start doing some of those snippets in some of these podcasts and kind of throwing that out there, there you for have, you. Guys. But we also have something really cool. We talked on the last podcast about something new coming out, but we have also have something else new, Jared, coming out. <laughs> do you, I don't even. Do you know what we're going to talk about? Uh, I know there are things. Oh, I don't know exactly know. which one oh, you're going to say. Okay. Oh, okay. maybe I don't even. Maybe I don't know. Uh, Let, let's hear it. This is something that I know Jared is all about. I'm all about. Jared it. is all about. I am all about this. The TikTok. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm so if you are big on TikTok, just start looking for us. We, we're not on there yet. Just I want to just warn you, we're not on TikTok yet. But it is one of our goals for well, the, the year. Well, the warning is we're coming. Yeah, the yeah. warning is we're coming. Look out, TikTok. <laughs> so um, yeah. we are going to be on TikTok. And it's not going to be a very long snippet. There will be short ones and probably the outtakes, the ones that <laughs> Amelia normally cuts out, will might end up making it in the TikToks. I, I think all of our listeners are of the mindset that we're, we don't make goof ups. No. We don't <laughs> never do. There's no edits. Outtakes. There's Come never on. edits. Get out of here. But also something that is coming up here, and we haven't really been focusing on this nearly as much. And we got our hand slapped by one of our mentors and coaches. He said, "Shame on you. You need to be pushing that subscribe yeah. button more and trying That's to true. get your people that are listening to subscribe." We are, we know we're getting millions of viewers, sure. And uh, but we're for some reason we don't have very many subscribers. <laughs> so we are going to ask you to go down there and click that subscribe button. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're getting very very close to the 100 subscriber, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I know sounds like that's a lot, <laughs> Huge <laughs> especially number. for this show. Huge number. But um, <laughs> but uh, we actually do have several. We have we have uh, quite a few people that listen to the podcast, but mm-hmm. on YouTube specifically, right? On YouTube specifically, um, we're coming up on the hundredth subscriber, and we are going to offer drum roll, please, Come on now. a one hundred dollar Amazon gift card to the one hundredth subscriber. Wow! Of the show, so tell so tell your friends, tell your mom, Sons tell daughters. your grandmother, tell 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 everybody up in here. To get on that subscribe button. So make sure that you subscribe. Uh, we'll try to mention that in the next couple episodes. I as have well. several Gmail accounts. There you go, Jerry. Maybe you could time. be the winner. <laughs> so hit that subscribe hey. button. Uh, also look out for us on TikTok. So today, bucks. I don't know where we got off, Jared, but we didn't get it. Oh, we, we, were, we were talking about a bad economy, right? Sure. And um, so we wanted to have an episode about... Renting your property mm-hmm. in a bad economy. Yeah. It's a little bit different than it was a it year ago, Jared. It is. You have uh, some properties. Yeah. You know. It's amazing. So uh, definitely some things that we've seen some trends. First of all, w- what we found was that you could just throw out a price. I mean, every, it, sh- it was just like the real estate market. So, you know, after every sale, you got your comp and then you knew you could five grand more, 10, maybe 10 grand more than that, than that most recent comp and you were going to get it to sell. Right. In this case for rent, it was very similar. You could just throw out that number. And and as long as it was nice enough, I mean, if you're going to throw out a, if you're, if you're trying to rent a slum, you're not getting the top end dollar. But I mean, if you're going to get a a nice house, Mm -hmm. you could throw it out there and and someone's probably going to rent it. Probably. And, uh, and that's not happening today. Well, okay. So, so some investors like, uh, have been spoiled by the rent increase. So you and we've had some investors that have only come to us the last two or three right, years. Right. You know, most of our investors, I think, are longer term and they've been with us for, you know, many, many years. And they've seen like the rents just go way up over oh, the last yeah. couple of years. And they're like, what in the world's going on? But <laughs> year over year, but you don't some get people, $100 to $200 increases year over every year. Every single yeah, year. Over that's and over that's year. ridiculous. Correct. That expectation. Um, and this year we're seeing that, you know, we probably need to just stay constant with what we were getting for mm-hmm. rent. We probably mm-hmm. don't need to keep making those. Now, if it's a tenant that's been in there for five years, I'm not saying don't raise the rent on yeah. them because I think you should. I really do believe every tenant should probably be raised almost every single year, mm-hmm. at least $50 or at least some kind of percentage mm-hmm. um, of what you think is – is is because uh, if not, you're going to get way behind. You wait mm-hmm. you wait too long, you're going to get way behind. But um, getting your property to rent for high dollar, I still mm-hmm. think that – you know. Yep. Th- so basically, we've sat down with our property management company and we kind of – Said, hey, like this is starting to become a problem even for us. Mm-hmm. Our average days on market has gone up. Mm-hmm. Our average, um, our, our vacancy's gone up a little bit. 
Um, our occupancies kind of come down a little bit. We're still over 95%, which I, I feel like is still pretty strong. Mm -hmm. um, our vacancy just this quarter kind of just slipped over 6%, which is high for us. We've been running like in the threes and the fours for the last you know four, four or five years. Um, and we kind of just sat down and we said, hey, like if the property's not renting, this is what the problem is. Like, mm -hmm. what could the problem possibly be? Yeah. And we've basically come up with four things. And those are the four things that we want to go over today. General general areas, right? I don't know. I You're mean, I, I would love for somebody to say maybe there's something else. If there's something else out mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. you tell me. But I kind of came up with this list and I said, hey, if the property's not renting, first and foremost, is it marketed? <laughs> is it marketed properly? Um, is it mm -hmm. on all the places that it needs to be? Mm -hmm. What does your listing look like? That's yeah. the first thing you need to be you know, thinking about. What do the pictures look like? Are there things, debris in the pictures? <laughs> um, you know, And this stuff, like you said, did maybe not matter sure. a year ago. Mm -hmm. So maybe we got pictures and maybe there's something that quite not, not quite right. I went through a couple of listings myself personally and I said, this picture shouldn't be in here. And this mm, picture sure. shows, you know, debris in here. Don't, you know, don't put this picture in here. Um, Even if the debris isn't there now, but the, if the right. debris is in the photo right. at the time it of this. It could have been a, a yeah, photo yeah, that was yeah. taken two or three years ago, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so is the marketing right? Does it look professional? Is there professional pictures? Is the mm -hmm. listing written out right? Is, you know, does it look professional? Um, it's something that we've do, had to do mm. is watermark all of our photos because there are scammers out there that sure. are trying to scam our properties. Um, so we've got to do a lot more than we used to have to do. Um, but I think the marketing is the first thing you have to ask. You know, is it marketed? Is it marketed property? And mm -hmm. what does our listing look like? Mm -hmm. um, I also went through the same process even yesterday. We were talking um, on a different pod, on a, not, I mean, on a different call with some of my um, different communities that I'm a part of. And we talk about short-term rentals, long-term rentals, and kind of what it looks like. And again, the first thing I talked about is the marketing, your listing. Like, what does it actually yeah. look like? So that's the first thing. Um, and then I think going along with that is it's like, what does your sales process look mm -hmm. like? So sales and mar marketing and sales, I think, is that first thing. And making sure you know what does that sales process look like? How quickly are they getting followed up with? Um, does the process for them to rent the pro to view the property and decide if they want the property and to rent the property, is it smooth? Is, mm -hmm. it, is it easy for the tenant to actually... Um, rent the property and mm -hmm. are we communicating are mm -hmm. we closing those loops yeah, are absolutely. we throwing the balls off into the other mm -hmm. into that tenants and saying hey this is what you need to do yeah, where you at? Um, are we following up if mm -hmm. we sent them an application if they said I want the property and sent the application and if they haven't Reach back out to us in a day or so. Or are we reaching back out, saying, "Hey, do you want this property? Mm -hmm. You know, I want to let you know I got several other people looking yep. at this property, and these are things that we might not have had to do a year ago yeah. because we might have had so many overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were getting complaints. Honestly, last year we were getting complaints, and even people that would you know put one star reviews on our property management because we weren't able to get to every single person that was trying to call on properties and it was just getting to be they were moving too quickly. ridiculous. And yeah. they weren't getting the properties that they wanted yep. because somebody else was getting them. And right. you know, that's our fault somehow. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. I digress. But so, so, so that first thing I ask is, Hey, is the marketing right? And then to follow up that marketing is our sales process and is our sales doing good. So that was the kind of the first thing that we talked about. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting. Um, Thinking through back in the day when when I first started working with Tom, we were we were a wholesale only company, and I remember uh, we ha it was our marketing. Now we were marketing m a lot of the time to investors. You know, mm -hmm. we had some home buyers, but for the investors, we had to present them with all the information that we expected them to need in order to for them to say. I don't need anything else. I have what I need based on what you have given me. I'm ready to buy. Right. Either I'm ready to buy or right. this yeah. deal isn't for me. Yeah, right. So got. so we in, in, in the last couple of years, last two years, whole, these new wholesalers, all they think is, hey, here's a deal. Right. They Highest just and think best. everybody is going to buy. Highest yeah, and best. <laughs> and so they're, they're, they, they have not learned the art of having to provide the, the details that they their clients should need. And they've been spoiled by the light. It's the same thing for tenants. You know, you've been able to just throw out a new deal, throw out HD photos, and you got it. Maybe we're not providing all the 
all the uh, um, the benefits or the the value adds or the the specialties mm-hmm. that this property may bring you yeah. in your listing. You know, these are yeah. things you didn't have to do, but now maybe you could focus more on on those types of things. Like what what is different about your home? Because in the end, typically you want to stand out from everybody else right. and what your listing looks like. So, so first thing, yeah. ask yourself why or ask yourself, hey, what's going on with the marketing? What's going on with the sales price? The second thing, the second reason why maybe your house might not be renting is the price. Mm, mm, mm. Now, we did a podcast about this, I don't know, seven, eight months ago because we had a lot of investors that got spoiled and they kept <laughs> putting the price up higher yeah. and... Then it was like, well, we want to get this thing rented, so we don't even want to like do any rehab to this property. We just want to like throw it back up there. Yeah. And sometimes these owners have owned the properties for 10, 15 years, and they haven't done anything to the property in 10, 15 years. And then mm-hmm. they wonder why they can't get their newer, higher, better price. Right. Uh, so price is the next thing. And I think the economy has affected this. I think it's yeah. affected it in two ways. First of all, people are being laid off, so the economy is not generally good. I do believe that we're kind of in a, we're no longer in this like euphoria stage emotionally. Um, we're definitely in, um, I, I, I say right now, we're kind of in the middle of um, denial, because there's some people out there that are still denying that the economy's you know, <laughs> changed. I, I don't know, but there's some people that are still denying. So we're in the middle of denial and panic. So mm-hmm. somewhere in that line of emotions, Um, You know, I don't think we've reached the bottom yet, but we're definitely, you know, falling. Uh, And there are there's a sense, there's a feeling out there, Mm -hmm. even from tenants that, hey, you know, the economy's not as good as it was. I might lose my job. There might be things that I might lose income. The government stopped the free money drop Mm. um, out there. Uh, So the price might not be right. And I think that what what we're finding is the price um, really is affected in... Um, houses that aren't what what I would say like over improved. They're mm-hmm. not like mm-hmm. if they're not going to be to that point where it's a higher standard, where right. there is granite countertops, where there is nice finishes, where like people like walk in the house and like, oh wow, I can't believe this is a rental that you're actually going to be renting me the property. Mm-hmm. That's where the price is much more affected. Yeah. Um, also, the other thing that we're finding is there's a big difference between single family and multifamily yeah. in this bad economy. And the multifamilies are not renting for as fast as, no, not as and not as much. Like we're not being able to get maybe even last year's prices. I, I do I, I even almost think the multifamilies are kind of even coming coming down. Mm-hmm. Is that bad overall? Probably not. I mean, it's just not gonna be that uphill climb that you might have anticipated. Hopefully, you didn't anticipate that. Hopefully, you kind of were, um, you know, gauging for that. And if you have mm-hmm. a, a lot larger portfolio, it's more about getting them all full and trying yeah. to keep that vacancy super low if you possibly can. So we were seeing, in for instance, some of these two-bedroom apartments in Gary were renting for eight fifty. You're not going to get eight fifty anymore. You might need to be at seven ninety five or seven seventy five or maybe eight hundred. Now, are there some that might rent for eight fifty mm-hmm. still? Yes, yeah. I'm not yeah. saying there's not. And especially if you've you know done a good job right. you know rehabbing the property, it may work. But we're seeing a lot higher days on market for our multifamily properties than we are for our single family properties. Everybody, I think, in the end, wants to live in a single family home. Um, you know, I don't think people. I don't think again, and maybe, and I do know that different parts of the country are a little bit different. But mm-hmm. at least in our market, people want to. If they had a choice, they would live in a house over living in a multifamily. And I think even with COVID, I think the mind shift changed super early, and I don't mm-hmm. think that mind shift has changed back much at all. So the price, um, anything else about price, Jared, or economy? I mean, those are kind of the main things that we're seeing, multifamily, single family. Um, you know, I think there's a big difference between highly rehabbed property versus, mm-hmm. you know, step above land, uh, step above slumlord. Um, you know, we don't we don't even manage those properties. So please don't bring those properties to us to manage. If you if you if your house is just a step above Slumlord, we do want to make sure our properties are nice. It's our name on these two. Like we're the ones that have to you know talk to the cities and talk to the judges and talk to different people about people's properties. So price is the number two thing. So why is my house not renting? First of all, marketing sales process. Number two, price. Number three, the third thing. And I think we got into the third, the third thing already a little bit already, mm-hmm. but is it's the property itself. 
Um, so the property itself could be the reason why this house isn't renting. It doesn't matter. It's not going to rent for any price mm-hmm. <laughs> in some in some instances. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe the house isn't clean. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's debris sitting around somewhere. Maybe, you know, the front hasn't been spruced up, you know, curb appeal. Maybe there's there, no mulch has been put down in five or seven, ten years. And in our market, that matters. I know in some markets, it's funny because my Pensacola market, nobody has mulch. Even the rich houses, they don't have mulch down there. It's really strange to me because up here, everybody has some kind of landscaping, some kind of little flowers or something in the front of their properties. Mm -hmm. Um, But just, and uh, trust me, to just go and view a property that's not renting, that's what, what I told my, you know, our team. I'm like, hey, if a property's not rented in 14 days, we need to check our marketing, check our sales process, check the price, make sure the price isn't right, and mm-hmm. go to the property. Yeah, like view it like I'm a tenant, gonna go look at the property, um, and uh, that's you know. So those are the top three things. Um, Jared, anything else on those? No, I mean I think the price and property that they're I mean they they're obviously connected. Of course they are, but I think in the end sometimes we. Uh, I think, again, the market is connected to, I always have to tell people, uh, on the investors on our calls, that tenants, they, they, they like HGTV as well. Mm-hmm. And, and they want the same thing, even though they're renting. And I think you, you mentioned denial. I, I think sometimes investors, they're, they're either cocky because they did have success during a time when everybody did. Bullheaded. Yeah. But I think sometimes you just, I think sometimes we tend to think that we know what someone wants. And, and uh, uh, right now, it seems that people want to have more for less. That's just what people want because of interest rates being where they are. I think if interest rates would have stayed where they were, people probably would still kept on buying. Um, and it's, it's interesting that you said that because I was in a mastermind a couple of years ago and the guys, you know, Everybody's always talking about what's changing. Mm-hmm. Like, what's going to change in the next 10 years? What's mm-hmm. going to, you know, how is our life going to get better or worse or mm-hmm. whatever? And how do I set up my business to, you know, be in, in the front of that? But then a guy got up and he's like, you know what? I think it's good to kind of look at that, those things. And what are the things that are going to change? But it's also good to look at the things that are never going to change. Yeah. What, what, and what you just said is never going to change. I, don't, mm-hmm. I think people are always going to want more. Yeah. And they're going to want to pay less, but it's especially true. It's 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 multiplied in a it's, bad economy. It's a response to the panic. Mm-hmm. The response to the panic of housing was, uh, I I'm going to pay whatever I need to because I need to find a place. Right, well, and that's kind of the way not up. there now. There's, yeah, those are, now there's it's on a the way down. Panic. And so. yeah, people are responding to the panic is I don't want to you pay too it. much. You got it. And so uh, so in the end. We need to, we need to be careful. And you, and so like I, but I have this issue. So Tom, you said you walk in the property and view it through the eyes of the tenant. And so we have team team members, they walk through and they don't think that way though. And so we do property checks every week and, you know, we, we focus on the ones that are marketed that whether it be retail or for rent or what have you. And we, you know, we want to put our eyes on that property every week, make sure everything's in, in shape and it's clean. And that's the point we say is if a tenant walks through there, what are they thinking? What are they seeing? And sometimes even our even our own team members miss things that they should be catching on those walkthroughs. So Tom, if so you walk you through a property, it. you did it. You walked through a property a couple weeks ago and you're like, this, 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 this. It's like, how did those get missed? And apparently there is sometimes we get we lose sight of those things. Maybe even maybe even we could be guilty of of throwing a property in the market because we got what we wanted. We were getting what we wanted. So I do think that there is that idea where we think we know. And and if and like you said, Tom, if it's on the market this long, sure, apparently there's something Sometimes people get missing. busy. And I also understand like it, it it's not what, what we want. Mm-hmm. Um, but but also you also have, you know, and the last thing I'm going to talk about is kind of leading into this, but mm-hmm. time of year. Yeah. So big, time of year is another piece of this. Um, and sometimes that's, I think sometimes even our own, in our, in our own crews, like we got to, you know, set the reset button and kind of mm-hmm. remind people. Um, and I think this is always a good time to do that. The first, the first of the year, the beginning of the year, you know, you kind of gotten through the holidays. The holidays are easy for people to get a little bit lax. Every single person probably has this problem in every single business that that's out there. Um, but also you should ask yourself, Hey, is this just a time of the year type of issue? Because the last thing we want to do is like, go way down on the price of our of yeah. our rent um, because like we're just going through a time of the I mean the, you have a yearly cycle of mm-hmm. when people buy yeah. and when people don't really have a lot of activity and we just got through that time of the year which every year it doesn't matter mm-hmm. what year it is 
every year, the worst time to rent the property is between November 15th and January 15th. So yeah. uh, so th- th- those, those are the four questions that, that we came up with for our team and for our meetings. And hopefully this helps you guys as well out there. Maybe you're managing some of your own properties. Uh, maybe you see these are some things that you want to look on for your own self as mm-hmm. well. But ask yourself, first of all, is the marketing right? Is the sales process right? Is the price right? You know, mm-hmm. is maybe the economy is dictating that this shouldn't be that this price. Is there something wrong with the property? Is the mm-hmm. property dictating that maybe the price isn't right? Mm-hmm. Um, or is a, does a, there's, there's, there's just some things that need to get done to this property um, in order to get this thing to rent? Um, and then also, is it just time of year? Yeah. Uh, and those are the things that we came up with for our team. And hopefully this has been helped to you today. Yeah, I, I just in piggybacking from the time of the year, I will say that last year, especially, and maybe the year before, but especially last year, it seemed as if the days on market through November, December, they were still pretty low. But but let's be uh, so I, I agree with that. But we didn't have as many properties to put right. out for rent. Right, right, right. So that's so there's so, like the supply and demand is always going to be like whatever it is. It's true, but we that forget that. Economy. So we we forget. So because of how quickly it was happening, we forget that that is normal. Right. It is normal in November and December, especially in the North, to place tenants. It just is. And so then all of a sudden, like you said, if you're not aware of these things, then you over overcorrect because you're almost panicking because, oh, my goodness, now our days on market are higher. They're always higher. They're always higher this time of year. And then right now we head in from the worst to the best time of the year coming into the spring. But we've also went from maybe the best time to ever rent to like, <laughs> true, true. I'm not gonna say the worst yeah. time. I don't know, like, of but, recent, but we've recent. really like yeah. gone through. The economy does, mm-hmm. you know, dictate some of this as well. So, wherever you guys are, are, are at, just remember we do build and manage rental portfolios for investors. If you're interested in that, please let us know. You guys yeah. can get a hold of Jared at Jared at BiolsonGroup.com, mm-hmm. or you can go to our website. Yep. At uh, buyolsongroup.com. You can get on our list. You can get on our list. And if you're yeah. looking for properties, we right. do have the Active Turnkey program, which we're excited. We're going to be doing a lot of podcasts mm-hmm. specifically about the Active Turnkey program, yep. where you can basically buy a property um, and pay all cash up front. So this is really for a little different you know, part of the investment community. So somebody who can actually afford to pay for the whole property up front, pay for a rehab and then be able to refinance the property and get most of the, your money back. That's what that's where our goal is for you, yeah. is for you to only be in these properties 5%, 10% mm-hmm. um, of the overall property. So you're mm-hmm. going to be in this properties less. Your cash on cash returns is going to be higher. Mm-hmm. Your overall ROI will be higher. Um, and we really love to get our investors to get to the point where they get all their money back. Oh, yeah. And then they get infinity returns. I mean, what's better Not than bad. that? I don't think there's yeah. much things that are much better than that. <laughs> um, but this is why we created this program. We created yeah. this program about seven, eight years ago. And uh, uh, many of our investors have been super successful mm-hmm. with it over the years. It does take time. does take work. There are issues that come up. Yep. Um, and with that active turnkey program, you're buying a property that you might have issues with. Um, we always tell people that there's two big risks with mm-hmm. the active turnkey program. The first one is... There may be more rehab. There might be something that comes up that we didn't anticipate, just like there is with our properties like when we time. buy them yep. and get in the middle of rehabs. Mm-hmm. And second of all, when you're going to refinance, you may not get the house to appraise for mm-hmm. what you might think it should appraise because banks don't like to appraise things on a cash out refi basis the same they would as if it was a purchase. So we've had good luck with mm-hmm. that. Um, again, like I don't think that's, that's not a normal issue, but it's an issue that I do want to warn people that could happen and I don't want you to be upset when it does, because inevitably it will happen. That's true. If you do enough properties, it's happened yep. to me, it's happened to Jared, it and it's me. happened yep. to many of our yep. investors. In my opinion, it doesn't mean that those properties aren't worth that. Nope. It just means that appraiser that day, that bank didn't really want that to give rogue. you that value. They didn't appraiser. want to pull. Yeah. But overall, um, I do think a good 78% of the time we do get yep. these to appraise for what we think they should appraise for, or sometimes maybe even much higher, mm-hmm. um, which is always a good yeah. time. That happened to Jared uh, yeah. quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I like both sides of it, and neither one is the rule. It's yep. the exception. And so True. another opportunity, though, we do have is we do have a sister company, Conduit Capital, that's mm-hmm. possible that they, if you're looking and, and say you don't have $100,000 liquid, it's possible that uh, we can get you connected and they could even lend on local deals here in mm-hmm. Northwest Indiana and, and they may be able to help you on an active turnkey deal. So if that sounds like yep. something you're interested in, Did you can want reach to throw us. throw that out to you guys as well. So that's, that's yeah. 
good good for bringing that up, Jared. Yeah, some people may be sitting there thinking, I, I can't do that. Maybe, I don't have 100 liquid. Maybe you don't have $100,000 yeah. to do yeah. the deal. You're like, yeah. I got 20. I, I can probably do it. Mm-hmm. I can probably swing it. Um, that would be something that we might be interested in talking Reach to you about. Reach out to me about that as well. Yeah, yeah and Jared absolutely. can connect you to Adam at uh, capital.com. And then don't forget. We have lots of stuff to not forget. We do, but... 100 subscriber. 100 subscriber gets, gets a, a $100, $100 Amazon gift card. Man. Um, Jared's trying to figure out how he can finagle. A lot of books way. I want to buy on Amazon. Um, just saying. To get that. Look out for our TikTok channel. Make sure you press the subscribe button. And if you are watching this, or I shouldn't say watching, listening on the podcasts, mm-hmm. give us a five star review. Tell Do your it. friends about Do us. It. Press the button. I know that. See, what I keep hearing from our investors is that they don't want their friends to know about us. <laughs> um, because they feel like if more people know about us, Jared, then there's going to be more competition to mm-hmm. get the properties. I understand that, but you have to give in order to sure. receive. You reap what you sow. Just mm-hmm. just want to remind you of all that. So you wouldn't we'll you. want if your friends knew something, you wouldn't want them to keep it from it's you. True, not a very good friend. Yeah, that's right. Ooh. Remember, we build rental portfolios <laughs> for investors. And we would love to build a rental right. portfolio or an investment pro- portfolio or a lending portfolio and love to help manage that for you. Um, we are here for you and mm-hmm. we want to be good stewards of all of our investors out there. Thanks for joining us today. Active Turnkey. The best way to buy rentals. God bless. Olson Group Network makes no warranty, guarantee, or representation as to the accuracy or sufficiency of the information featured in this podcast. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. This podcast should not be considered professional advice. Unless specifically stated otherwise, Olson Group Network does not endorse, approve, recommend, or certify any information, product, process, service, or organization presented or mentioned in this podcast, and information from this podcast should not be referenced in any way to imply such approval or endorsement. Any third-party materials or content of any third-party site referenced in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the opinions, standards, or policies of Olson Group Network. Olson Group Network assumes no responsibility or liability for the accuracy or completeness of the content contained in third-party materials or on third-party sites referenced in this podcast or the compliance with the applicable laws of such materials and or links referenced herein.